third presentation in our series about the business to business sales process. In this small video, I'll be talking about the advocating. So the advocating comes after we have related to the customer. We've been doing the discovery process to figure out what it actually is that the customer needs. And then we get into the advocating. The advocating is in general where we start presenting our products, our solutions. We try to move it across so that the customers, they actually start becoming the advocates for our products. So they actually themselves start to ask and say, hey, I can use your solution for this. I can use your product for that, etc." So we want them to become the ambassadors. And that also means that the sales role that we're feeling is different when we're using this approach. Suddenly we move from the one who is proposing something to the customer to the one who is taking the information from the customer and advocating for the customer uh, into our company. So the key message here is that you must always act as the representative and the best interest for your client. All right. This also means that there are two things that you need to be able to do. You need to be able to present the product. You need to have the product knowledge to see the opportunities where it fits, but you also very much need the people skills. It also means that if you have very much technical product knowledge, no people skills, things will fail. Or if you have a lot of people skills, but don't know the product, you'll not be able to relate it to the customer's needs. All right. I have, however, seen really, really good salespeople having very little product knowledge, but then they bring a team. Okay. You have four options when you're trying to advocate or sell a product. You can use the product support, the product superiority. Or you can use the economic superiority, the market identity, or that the need, that the knowledge that you're bringing and the customer service is better than the rest. Product superiority, well, that kind of gives uh, itself. Your product is just better. Better quality, uh, better fit for the solution. The economic, it's either cheaper now, it's cheaper when they purchase it or as a lifetime consideration. In the business to business sale, lifetime consideration is much, much bigger and much more important than it is in business to consumer. The market identity, is there a brand recognition? Is there a track record for your company providing the best products, the best solutions, the things that the customers needs the most? Well, then you have a market identity or in the regular business to consumer, a brand awareness. The last, the need knowledge, uh, customer service, it's also very big because customer wants their business to run as smoothly as possible. If you can demonstrate that you know the customer very well, you know their needs, their emotional <coughs> attachments to different things, uh, and you can say, hey, I'm going to service and support you in this way, you're lowering the risk for this customer. Okay. Again, the perspective for the customer is the key here. You should only refer to the features, the product uh, capabilities that is relevant for the customer. It might also be able to make coffee, but if the customer drinks tea, hey, forget about it making coffee. Make sure you tailor it, your advocacy towards what the customer needs and not everything else. It's really, really tempting to do this. I, I have a tendency of almost getting into it myself when I get excited about it, but keep it simple. Differentiation strategy, uh, if you say, okay, this is different, but you might have seen our competitor's product. You need to focus on the customer service. What is it actually in the customer perspective that is different? What is it in the way that they use it that will make it different? Not how it technically is. So you get going from selling the features, the descriptions that <coughs> it is blue and it's uh, this big and it weighs that much until selling a solution. So you're going from selling a drill 
to select the whole. Okay. This is where you can use the SAP approach or SAP approach, solution, advantage, benefit. So you provide, first of all, what's the solution to the problem that you've discovered in the interface? How does it work? <coughs> then you go in and say, hey, the problem is solved by our solution like this. We have the drill, we put it to the wall, we add power and we make a hole. Hey, that's how our advantage is. And then for the company, it says, hey, we do it better, we do it cheaper, we do it with less errors or well, more nicely than the rest. So by applying the SAP approach, you get the natural flow of things. You are building argumentations. However, we are in a space where we need to maintain some ethical standards because have we gotten information from our customer? Have we been doing a good discovery phase? We do know a lot of them, but we also know a lot about the competitors. We don't want to bring those kind of things into our discussions here now. We don't want to talk bad about uh, competitors. We don't want to talk bad about the customer's company. Well, I know you have a problem here that you cannot solve yourself. So therefore, let me come and help you. It doesn't work. <coughs> People will be on the edge when doing that. So be respectful for what it is that you know. And then take it positively. Hey, you want to do this and achieve that. I can help you with that. Instead of saying, you cannot do that. Let me solve it for you. All right. So next presentation is about, <coughs> well, presentation phase of the sales. See you.